I was going to do a fake Celestia, but I realized I will fail at that. So I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 10, A Royal Problem. Besides, we both have daylight names, so if you did Celestia, how would I do Luna? Because Lux, Lux is light and Ember is fire. Yeah. J just because I'm a night pony. Well, <laughs> somewhat. Mm -hmm. Well, you would be a night pony if you didn't have a day job. True. Well, this is an episode fans have been waiting for for a while. An episode about the royal sisters. And they also managed to cram a couple other things that fans have been wanting for a while. The Nightmare Moon version of Celestia. Though I've heard a couple of versions of the na fan name, which is... My favorite is Solar Flare. I think that's the only one I've heard. So... A lot of stuff in this episode that could be termed fan service or fan pandering. An episode about the sisters. An episode with Celestia's evil alter ego. And an episode where Celestia's evil alter ego fights Nightmare Moon. Mm -hmm. And we fit all of this in one episode. One very nice episode. I only felt that Celestia and Luna's characters were a little off. And that may have been only because of perception because we've never seen them we have very rarely seen them outside of their specific royal roles or outside of an emergency situation where they have to be brave face the world's coming to an end but everything will be okay on the inside holy smokes this is scary <laughs> we're all gonna die we're all gonna die we're all gonna die <laughs> everything's fine we're gonna die we're gonna die we're gonna die Okay, ladies and gentle colts, apparently we've lost Lux for the moment. <laughs> what I want to know is what call does the map have on Starlight? She does not possess one of the elements of Harmony. Yeah, that's a good point to bring up. This is probably another reason why Twilight was freaking out. Yeah, not only has the map never called just one pony, it's always been pairs. But it's also always been some pony who's connected to the elements of Harmony. Because that's what the chairs around the table, table tree castle map, elements of harmony, it's all themed that way. The only thing I can think of is she helped repair the table after I think she broke it. Mm-hmm. So that might have somehow got her into the table system. She hacked the system completely by accident. So before we probably gush more over the good stuff of the episode, any nitpicks? Because I'm pretty sure I heard some while we were watching the episode. How did she- I mean- <laughs> For clarification, that was on the second watching. Don't let every pony think I'm rude and I'm talking over the show. Ah, uh, well you did make people think I stole something. <laughs> but yes, it was our second viewing. Because, you know, not that most episodes aren't worth re-watching, buying on DVD, etc., but- we really wanted to watch this one a second time before recording. So, yeah, I think the one Lux is specifically referencing is, how does Luna know that Solar Flare's name is Daybreaker? She wasn't in the dream for the introduction. She got pulled into the dream by Celestia from her own nightmare. So, how would Luna know that? Because Luna specifically states that she doesn't have her own magic right now. She has Celestia's magic, which means she has no power in the dream world, which means she should not have knowledge to know that that freaky pony over there with the fire mane is called Daybreaker. Unless it is actually something Celestia has privately told Luna in the past that I fear that I would become this if I went like you. But that also brings up another question that I just brought up before we started recording about, so is this Starlight's internal thoughts on how Celestia would become Nightmare Moon? Or is the fact that Celestia has Luna's magic somehow influencing the dream so it's more accurate to how Celestia sees herself as Daybreaker? Very valid point, because does everyone agree on the form? Because <laughs> this was all coming from Starlight, we thought. But Celestia has Luna's magic. We've seen Luna's magic alter dreams in previous episodes and guide them. And manifest itself into something evil and perceived as an enemy by Luna as an outside creature, but it was actually an internal problem that was causing it. It was something inside Luna that was actually causing it, and it could infect other people's dreams. Yeah, going back to the Tantibus, but the Tantibus was handled. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that this could be Celestia's version of that. 
Well, Luna created the Tantibus. Uh, my other big nitpick was when Celestia raised the moon, she was like, ha, huh, even easier than raising the sun. She took on both jobs for a thousand years. It hasn't been that long since her sister's been back. She forget that quickly? Yeah, that was the only major plot hole I saw in this episode, is how the sisters were, specifically how Celestia was referring to things. She had to take care of both duties, except for the dream stuff. For a thousand years. Yes, yeah, so she has raised and lowered both the sun and the moon for a thousand years. And that brings up my other point. So if Luna's job walking the dreamscape is so vital, how did Equestria survive a thousand years without someone protecting the dream realm? I'm thinking this explains a lot of the crazy ponies. Because Luna specifically says that it could harm her psyche. So I'm thinking without Luna around, there was a lot more need for psychiatrists. It may also explain, even though Luna came along, hmm, yeah, it's not long ago. So Luna may not have been around when Starlight was younger. And maybe if Luna was around when Starlight was younger, Starlight would have grown up to be the pony she ended up being and doing all those bad stuff that ended up, you know, causing all the problems. Possible. I'm pretty sure Luna wasn't back at that time. Probably not. If you assume that Twilight and Starlight are about the same age, then Starlight was fully adult by the time Luna came back and was already shaped by her childhood and whatever damage to her psyche might have been intensified by her dreams has already occurred. Hmm. A lot of interesting theories and ideas popped into my head like, so there's probably a lot of unbalance that still needs to be fixed, which explains why the harmony tree and everything occurred because there's so much unbalance in Equestria because of the fact that the sisters weren't able to maintain their balance, their harmony, and it was unbalanced for a thousand years. And that's kind of a lot to repair, especially when apparently Celestia and Luna still weren't really getting along. Hmm. Or not as long as they thought they were doing. So anything else? Or should we go on to all the stuff like, wow, that was so cool and the Daybreaker fight and the... <laughs> Twilight quit hovering. <laughs> you were not called. There were other events to which you were not called that you were disappointed about that you did not cheat and go on anyways. All you did was make things worse. Where in that were you being a good mentor? It was established at the beginning of the season that Starlight couldn't really learn anything else from you and that she should be free to go on her own. So why are you hovering? Because she's Twilight and still extremely nervous about things, especially with something new like Starlight being on her own. Yes, but the map called her. And every time they've doubted the map, it's been right in the end. And as a teacher and mentor, she should be keeping those emotional reactions under better control. Because she was saying everything that came to mind and projecting her own fears onto Starlight. Starlight probably wouldn't have had that nightmare if Twilight wasn't so unhinged. Mm -hmm. But you gotta admit, Twilight's reactions were pretty funny. Twilight's reactions were pretty awesome. She was kind of, I think, a little bit of stand-in for the audience. Mm -hmm. Of, you did what? To whom? For how many cookies? I was going to leave out the last line, but yeah. And no cookies, just pancakes. I also like the whoop in drawer. <laughs> I probably would have done that much sooner. You would have tossed her out the window. No, because the object that she enchanted did not belong to me. Hmm. That would be property damage. Good point. In the royal palace, where I could probably be sent to the royal dungeons over it. Dungeons! A thousand years! I'm pretty sure that's from an Adventure Time episode, I think. Yes. Because I haven't watched past like episode four of that show because I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. If we ever do a second top ten list of things that are popular that we don't get, we'll be sure to put Adventure Time on there. Yeah, because I, I uh, uh Moving on. Yes, moving on. And two things. The switching places, that's the whole Freaky Friday thing. But it was nice. They only switched the cutie marks and the magic. They weren't having to actually pretend to be each other. They were still themselves, just taking on the responsibilities of the other with the power of the magic that was already belonged to the other sister. 
Mm-hmm. So they got the magic and they got the job, but they didn't have to do the whole body switch where they could go ruin each other's reputation and be mistaken. But instead, Luna ruined a field trip. Yes. Why were there only four ponies in that photo? Four student ponies. Maybe it was only those ponies going on a field trip, or those were the only ponies who are available to be free at that time. They can't always say that, oh, you're available to go and take these pictures. No, you need to be in class at this time. Yes, but when you're trying to do this fundraiser for this field trip, don't you want every pony to see what a large group it is so that you know they desperately need funding because it's so many bits per student? Mm. Ah, Also, poor Luna. That was a great face she made right there. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like, Luna, you did hate the camera for every photo. <laughs> Where is that from? That's uh, from another episode. Ah. Uh, Sweetie Belle and Rarity. Ah. Uh, Love the camera. Now hate the camera again. <laughs> Sweetie Belle, you did hate the camera for all of these. And the other thing I want to bring up is Cutie Mark switching magic. This was a very controlled spell. It had a set duration and would undo on its own. But it had some of the same consequences as the Star Swirl the Bearded spell that Twilight tried in Magical Mystery Cure. So that one randomly scrambled everyone and they didn't remember what they were like before. Mm-hmm. And it seemed to have a wider effect, almost like it had past consequences. Like it was retroactive compared to this spell, which is from that time period on. And also I think the spell more affected the elements of harmony than it did the individual ponies. Yeah, I think Star Swirl's spell was specifically directed towards the elements of harmony, and since those ponies are connected to the elements, they got switched around. But if that's the case, why didn't Twilight get switched? Even though she was the spellcaster, she's still an element of harmony. Yeah, but she also seems to be the element of magic. So magic didn't get switched. She doesn't have a counterpart. She's a focus point. Because all the other elements were focused towards her. She's the one who brought them together. She's the spark. Yes, but at the same time, the switches weren't really opposites, and they didn't switch crossways. Rarity got Rainbow Dashes, but Rainbow Dash didn't get Rarities. Rainbow Dash got Fluttershies, and Applejack got Rarities, and Pinkie Pie got Applejacks. So there didn't seem to be any connection in terms of what type of elements were switched because okay so rarity got rainbow dash's loyalty and rainbow dash got fluttershy's kindness kindness and loyalty aren't really opposites i don't think the elements really have positive opposites only negative opposites which we saw in discord's episode yeah i still think it's the fact that she's the focal point compared to the others who are more like not spindles, um, spokes? Spokes of a wheel, and she's the center point. Mm-hmm. It just seemed interesting that the spell had some items in common with the one from Magical Mystery Cure. And most shows, not just kids' shows, have that whole, oh, I wonder what it would be like, I wish I could trade places. I mean, it's a really old story, going all the way back to the prince and the pauper, of trading places and experiencing someone else's life. Mm-hmm. Grass is always greener. Mm Mm-hmm. But the other thing that bothers me on this is Luna hardly got anything right slash accomplished in Celestia's day. And Celestia, yes, she needed help, but she resolved Starlight's nightmare. Because, I mean, even at the end of the episode, right before Luna takes off, it's like, yeah, you need to fix this and this that I screwed up. But Luna isn't having to go back and fix things in the dreamscape. Well, she may not be able to, you know, at that time because everyone's awake. Well, yeah, but I'm saying there is no counterpoint. Mm, Yeah, there's not balance. Though, you gotta admit this is way better than the comic. Oh, yeah. I definitely think how they're portraying Luna and Celestia outside of their roles in this show is much better than how they do it in the comic. Yes, because they didn't do a full trade places in the comic. It was more of Celestia indulging Luna, going, go ahead, go ahead, and then sneaking off for a spa day and leaving Luna to handle both her day and her night duties. Yeah, and not just that, the Luna in the comics is always very more like how the fans saw her compared to how she actually is. Like, in this episode, she's more like how she actually is. 
Well, the thing is, there was so little known about Luna in the beginning. There was a lot of room for fans to build up character traits because we barely saw her. She was practically a blank slate, so people had plenty of time to build her up in their own minds. Mm -hmm. Also, going on to little details in the episode, when Celestia went into the dreamscape, all the bubbles, there are actually references to other episodes and also references to um, fan stuff in there. Like, there was a bubble with Doctor Who's? hiding around a corner looking around a corner like he's uh worried about something and there was derpy doing her thing or bubbles i think she's known now as now and or muffins can't remember i know it's like a name that's different than the fan name because they can't use that yes it has actually been labeled as both some of the blind boxes like you pick up at a hot topic label derpy as bubbles and some of the products that feature Derpy on the Hot Topic website label her as Bubbles. But other things label her as Muffin. But yeah, there's also references to other episodes in there, actual clips and stuff like that. Yes, because you can see Discord and Schmooze together. That's kind of scary. Either that's the Schmooze's dream, or that's Discord's dream. Either way, it's disconcerting that Luna can go into that spot. Just because it features those two characters doesn't mean it's one of them having the dream. Hmm. Also, there was a reference to the um, Luna's episode with the fact that Fluttershy was being carried by Angel because there's a bubble where Angel's really big and Fluttershy's sitting on top of his head. Mm-hmm. So that's from the Tantibus episode. All those nice little things. Also the pancakes. People now know what I was referencing in... <laughs> even though those are screenshots from this episode. Yes, so... But I have a feeling most people are watching ahead on the Canadian schedule, and we are terribly behind by comparison. Mm-hmm. So is there more? Always. It doesn't seem like the lavender would fade that quickly in the wall sconces, because even properly dried herbs still give off scent. So that seems a little off that she has to replace it every night. Hmm. Also, the dried may have more potency than fresh, so putting out stacks of lavender potpourri would also possibly be as useful, if not more so, and would need to be renewed less often. Hmm. And, you know, the return of the Canterlot royal voice. Yeah, that was nice. It was awesome. I love how it only comes up because she gets, not really nervous, but... Uh... She wants to get back to what she was planning on doing, which was saving the field trip. Mm hmm When she's stressed, that's what I was going for. I like how it only comes out when she's stressed. Yes, and she figures that being commanding is the quickest way that she can dispel the rumors. There are no timber wolves. I say there are no timber wolves. Therefore, there are no timber wolves. Okay, I need to go fix this field trip. Mm hmm Then everyone goes running away. There are timber wolves! Oh my god, they're definitely timber wolves! It's like, wow. You guys didn't even stay for lunch. My goodness. And then approaching the doorway, arguing beyond it, and she goes, ugh, and then goes in, closes the door, and then, oh, that was a nice three hours. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, we got all that settled. Are we still all friends? Yeah, definitely. And Luna's like, Luna zombie. Well, considering that she just had finished her night shift before their cutie marks got switched, she was up all night, and then she was up all day. Mm-hmm. But they were also showing how tiring Celestia's duties were. Yes, I know that. And we still are trying to figure out when does Luna actually get some sleep? Because Luna is awake and at Celestia's side when Starlight reports that the map sent her. So what time of day was that? Does Luna get a nap like right after she grabs a piece of fruit and goes lays down and then she's up for like half the day? And speaking of details, I love how she only ate the peels. <laughs> Of the fruit. Yeah, that she was so tired she peeled the banana and then ate the peel and dropped the banana. Mm -hmm. Also that she took a bite out of the entire pineapple. That would hurt my teeth and, and my tongue. And my mouth. Yes. The roof of my mouth. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to show how tired she is. She knows she needs energy, but she needs sleep more. But still, when does Luna get a chance to sleep? Because we know she has to sleep sometime during the night because the Tantibus escaped from her dream 
into the dreams of the main six, which means they all had to be asleep at the same time. So apparently Luna is very good at going on just a little bit of sleep. Though it's very obvious that Celestia, you know, when Luna's putting up the lavender in the wall sconces and Celestia walks by with the dignitaries, that Celestia is not having fun. No. Oh, yes, you're such a card. Oh, my God, can we please wrap <laughs> this up? She, It's just like how she is at the Grand Galloping Gala. Like, this is so boring. Mm-hmm. Because it was so obvious to us, but poor Luna. Apparently, she, a number of years, she's been back to normal. She hasn't realized that, yeah, Celestia's doing all this to keep these people happy, so they probably keep donating to stuff that they're supposed to donate to, and don't cause a revolt and yeah or they're working on you know keeping up the governing for their areas or trade agreements or assistance in disasters mm -hmm. it's called diplomacy yes and it's very exhausting so how are we doing uh daybreaker wall cannon is not actually canon hmm she appeared in the show so she has an official form and an official name. But she was in Starlight's Nightmare. She doesn't actually exist. Hmm. Yeah, that reminds me of the wording that Celeste uses at the end. You shall never exist again. Well, technically, she, she exists in the dream, so that's phrasing is correct. But technically, it might have been better phrased as you'll never exist in the real world or... Yeah, or just you shall never exist or I will never become you. Or I shall never let you exist, or... Mm -hmm. There were lots of ways that I feel that could have been phrased better, considering that she's just some pony's nightmare. Mm -hmm. Just some pony's nightmare. That sounds like a title of an episode. <laughs> could be. So, final thoughts on the episode? I really enjoyed it. We got a lot of things that we wanted. I mean, seeing Celestia and Luna acting together as siblings and not always in their royal roles... Very nice, a royal or mentor, because we see Celestia being mentor very often because of her interactions with Twilight. Luna we've mainly seen be royal, with the exception of a small portion of Nightmare Night, where she gets into it and is having fun. Also, in the 100th episode where the two sisters are bickering, like, I thought you were supposed to bring the present. No, I thought that was you. <laughs> yes, that was very much sisters. Also, you two are the two most powerful alicorns in existence. Just magic up the present real quick. Quick teleportation spell. I do like their interactions a lot in this episode. That was like my favorite part. All their reactions and stuff like that. Ugh, oh, priceless. Mm -hmm. Going at each other and then turning on Starlight because she tries to intervene. That is pretty much how fights go. They will be against each other, but if you try to step in, they are together and against you. Mm-hmm. And we do have the classic, oh, yeah, like, this is so hard, and they're fine. Mm-hmm. Yes, you just get to flitch around in Pony's dreams. Yeah, I don't think we've ever actually seen Celestia angry in any episodes up to this point. Outside of a nightmare or spell-induced sequence, I don't really think so. We've seen... The closest is when she's angry towards someone like Discord or something like that. But that's less of normal anger and it's more of, I think the phrase is righteous anger. Yeah, because it's more of you've done something against those that I protect, not you've done something against me. Mm -hmm. And this is more normal anger, everyday anger that everyone else goes through. Yeah, it's more personal anger. Mm -hmm. I really like this episode. The pacing was a little quick. I didn't notice it the first time, but I noticed it the second watching, but I was like, they're doing really well with making the pacing, even though it feels fast, not feel too fast. A lot is getting done. They're also doing a lot in this episode that we actually wanted them to do, and it doesn't feel bad. Like some episodes where it's like, oh yeah, they're just doing this. Uh, they didn't handle it well. <laughs> but this episode they handled very well. Yeah, so we got a lot of stuff that we wanted as fans and it was a good progressive episode because there is actually story progress while still being very much a slice of life episode hmm. two siblings who can't get along because they don't value what the other does mm -hmm. 
and they get to appreciate what the other does in the end. Yes. Oh, still, Luna flying off at the end. That was really unfair. She didn't even take the time to explain what went wrong. Yeah, but it's also very little sister-like. Quite. But it's also very immature. They are both adults, and they just came through a huge battle where they had these, you know, wonderful touching moments. And now she's like, yeah, I know you've been up all night, sister. I'm going to go sleep. You got to sleep most of the night, Luna. Yes, you were nice and made your sister terrible pancakes. <laughs> and yes, you told your sister she doesn't have to act perfect around you. You couldn't have stayed five more minutes. When you change off job duties, you usually want to tell the other person exactly where you left off. Yeah, I love how we end stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, we're ending stuff right now. Five minutes later... Perhaps not. We'll see what the magic of editing can do. Uh, so, outro. Outro. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this, we have more episodes. Go check them out. Like, subscribe, share this episode, leave a comment, subscribe. If you like Lux's art, I hope you do. You just watched a whole drawing get colored. You can find more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, and yes, even Facebook. If you would like to and are able to offer some support to this channel financially, check out Patreon and Ko-fi. We have accounts for both. Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi at three. Thank you for listening.